Hey everybody, this is a Cinema 4D tutorial covering the basics of sculpting. So in order to sculpt in Cinema, what we need to do is start with some sort of object. So for this, we're just going to start with a primitive object. I'm going to go to the primitive menu and choose a sphere. Now, in order to sculpt this and to get the menu tools, we need to change our layout. So if you go to the top right, you'll find the layouts menu and you can locate sculpt and select. So to begin sculpting, we need to go to the object layer, click on this and make it editable. All right. Next, if you go to the sculpting layers, uh, we want to subdivide this. Uh, and the reason being is that if we take something like this grab and we start to um, manipulate it, you see it's going to be very pixelated because there's not a lot of uh, polygons right now to be able to manipulate. Um, and just to show that, if we go to display and shading with lines, you can see that there are not a lot here. So what we want to do is go up to the top menu and grab this um, icon called subdivide and just subdivide it. Now for this, what I would recommend is that we begin to subdivide um, uh, several times over. So subdivide it at least once, twice, three times, maybe four. Four levels is a good way to start. You'll see that the memory here is about six megs, so it's not too huge. And uh, we'll increase that as we go further into some of the details. All right, so now I'm just gonna shut off display and shading, go back to sh um, regular shading, and we'll zoom into this and talk a little bit about some of the features. So first off, uh, the two main tools that you'll likely use are gonna be pull and grab. And so the difference between those two are that pull uh, allows you to sort of draw over the surface, okay? And uh, kind of like pull out areas of your scene. So if we use this tool, you see we can kind of like click and drag and draw and it will slightly pull out shapes over whatever we do, okay? Grab is gonna be a little bit different in that it's gonna grab and take an area and then pull it out and I'm using symmetry right now, so but you can see it's going to pull and shape and move in or out depending upon how you use that. It's going to undo. Now, when you're modeling things that are symmetrical, it's important to set up your settings accordingly. So let's say you're going to model a face, a skull, um, anything that has some sort of symmetry to it. What you'd want to do is go down to the attributes manager for one of the tools, so for example, grab here and uh, click on where it says symmetry. And the first thing to do if you want, it's likely that you want all of your tools to be linked to have that symmetry, just click on this little button called link symmetry. Next, uh, you can define what symmetry you want to use and you can use more than one. So as a quick example, if I choose the uh, X, that is going to be symmetrical along the Y and the Z, all right? So here you can see I've got the left side and the right side. If I pull this out, it's always going to be point out along that direction as well, right? If I do um, the Y, it's going to pull up the top and the bottom at the same time. So there, actually I have them all selected now, right? So then I've got the top and the bottom um, being manipulated together, right? So that is the Y does just the top and the bottom. If the uh, X does the uh, front and back, and then the Z will, will be all of that together. So if we had all three of these selected, then you could pull out areas along that symmetry accordingly, right? So that is uh, going to be really helpful. So depending upon your orientation, I would suggest choosing a, um, a symmetry that will fit. So in this case, if I choose Z, I'm going to be um, going along the left and the right side here, which is great. Um, now, one thing that, we'll, that I'd like to start with is, I'd like to start with the grab tool. And I'm gonna go over these two for this first part of the tutorial, and then I'll go through more of these tools later on. So grab, what grab does is allows you to um, shape your object. And if we click down here in the attributes manager, click settings, I like to start with the size of the tool to be rather large. So even if I start as high as 200, you'll see I get a very big tool, and I can start to shape and model more in that sort of fashion. So really think about this like you're sculpting a piece of clay, right? You wanna start with those bigger shapes to kind of get the form how you want it and kind of work with it accordingly to get um, 
more of those details in. So you, and you can go higher than 200, you know, you can kind of work back and forth between these two different forms. So I start out first by kind of working with the basic uh, outside form and then slowly work smaller and smaller with some of those details. All right, there's my alien head that I'll start with. Um, so whenever you're on settings, you can change the size, right? So that becomes really important to consider. Now pull, what's interesting about this is you have size and pressure. So if I have um, the size at 30, which maybe I'll go a little bit bigger to like 60, let's say, okay? And if I start drawing with 60 pressure right here, like if I, I did a little bit of um, drawing on the surface to make some sort of bumps, right? Then um, it's gonna take me a little while to build that up with 20% pressure, right? But if I bump the pressure up higher, let's say 80%, right? Uh, it's going to affect much more quickly, right? So I'm going to get this to pop out much more quickly over the surface. Now, what I also like about, <clears throat> about pull is that you have the option to invert. So pull, uh, the default is to pull out along the surface, right? It's sort of like pulling that certain area. Whoops. <laughs> uh, and um, if you go down to the bottom, you'll find this little button called invert. So if you click this, then you can start um, to do a negative, right? So if I wanted to do some eye sockets, for example, I could go here and start to draw in symmetrically to get this sort of like, you know, eye socket kind of form, right? It's a little bit too big of a tool. Let's go down to 40 instead. Uh, and yeah, so if I draw this now, you'll get more of that shape. All right, so here's my eye sockets that I'm working with. And of course you can increase the pressure. And then, um, you know, if I wanted to go further with this, let's say I wanted to do a bit of a nose, uh, maybe we'll go down to like 15, for example, and we'll make this sort of like an alien skeleton. Um, I can start to work with that. Now notice that as I'm working on the nose, I'm gonna do that again smaller, let's do 10. Well, you'll notice as I'm doing this, um, it's looking slightly pixelated, right? And again, that has to do with the subdivision resolution that we're working with. So if I wanted to smooth this out, what I could do is actually subdivide further. So if I click subdivide, watch what happens to that nose area I was working on. It starts to get smoother. I'll do it one more time, <clears throat> it starts to get smoother yet. You can do this too many times, so, so be careful. You know, I'm at 100 megs right now, that's a pretty big file. You don't wanna crash your computer. But with this, <clears throat> at a higher subdivision level, I can get more and more details in here working, all right? So typically what I'll do is work both with um, kind of the positive, the negative of the subdivision um, surface and, uh, and using grab and pull in combination, you can get lots of nice variances. So here now I'm gonna go to grab again and bring this down, let's say to 40 in terms of the size and I can start to shape and, and uh, make this you know, much more detailed. So overall, between using the uh, grab tool and the pull tool, you can start to shape your composition and manipulate it as you go. And remember, it's always a good idea to ramp up the size of the um, tool for grab when you're starting to shape, right? And, um, and then, bring it down for when you're starting to do more of those details. So even this quick example, you can see I'm starting to get kind of an intricate, interesting form. And we're gonna go in a little bit further with uh, some of the other tools to talk about what they do. But for now, pull and grab, again, setting up the symmetry settings, and then also using the size and on pull pressure can change. And then finally, uh, invert is a great way to, to add more of those details. All right, so that's it for this round. Uh, I'll be having another tutorial coming up that'll talk a little bit about some of the other features. Um, so we'll see you next one.